there were basically three parts of what we're going to do for PUTS. And there's the academic side, and we're going to be sending some people to training to decide what makes the context of what we're doing important and how will we train that to other people. So there are 16 leaders that will be going through a two-day, one two-day class and one three-day class, and they'll learn stuff like how do, how do you use data to solve problems? How do you influence leaders? How do you have a good change plan? Um, those kinds of things. But the other important part of a pod is to make sure that they operate as a team. So what we've done there is we've had pod kickoffs and we will have some ongoing work for within the pod itself. And the people who have gone to the training will come back and teach the pod what they learned in that training so that we're all operating from a place of context. Healer pod. And you know, when I first heard this pod concept, I kind of thought of peas in a pod, alien pods from Mars, and all of those things. But then I really started thinking about it, particularly because we've done our first pod meeting. And I would, I have this analogy in my mind about leading a pod. And it's kind of like this, particularly from a nuclear perspective. You all remember the Apollo 13, there was a movie Tom Hanks starred in it. And you know, these astronauts are up in the spacecraft and they call and they go, Houston, we got a problem. Well, this is, and then what did Houston do? They went and got all of their experts. They got their engineers, their technical experts, their life support experts. And then they got everything they had available to them put together in a room saying, here's our tools. Here's what we have on that spaceship as tools. And I equate being a pod leader to bringing all my experts together in a room and hearing about all the HR tools we have in our bag and going, how do we solve this problem with our tools? Do we adapt the tools? Can we be creative? How can we help the business solve their problems? And it was, this is how I envision leading a pod, is getting the best minds together to pull together a, a solution, not only for the immediate crisis, but then take on those learnings forward in a very proactive way for future learnings and sharing that information. Hi, I'm Libby Chido and I'm the HR Business Consultant for the Monticello Nuclear Plant in Minnesota. I have been asked to talk about um, the definition of a pod. And the first thing I want to do is talk about what a pod is not. A pod is not some weird 60s living space, which you just saw. A pod is not a gathering of fruit, vegetables, or animals and a pod is not a specific group of HR individuals working solely on behalf of a business unit. Officially, I'm going to read you the definition of a pod. It's a dedicated team of HR consultants working together to support a business area from a solid place of context. A team that will support the execution of a com comprehensive work area. In my case, it's the nuclear pod, and I'm excited to be able to share what I've learned over the last year um, about the nuclear industry and show the nuclear um, leadership organization that it's better to have HR at the table. Hi, my name is Steve Theobald. I'm a senior talent management consultant here at Excel Energy. I recently was able to attend the two-day um, nuclear pod kickoff, the new kind of delivery system for HR. And it was really, really cool. Uh, we had a huge number of people on that team, all representing different parts of HR. Uh, different personalities, different centers of excellence, different knowledge, but the, the two days were great. We really did come together as a team. Uh, that was one of the highlights. Uh, the Probably the other big highlight I have for my experience was the fact that um, we got so much commitment from the leadership at Monticello Plant, uh, from their leaders attending our meeting. It was really neat. We had John Grubb, Mark Schimmel, and Jeff Davis. They spent most of those two days with us and that was really kind of unexpected. It's something that they made happen. But what came out of that was really our group understanding the Monticello site through a great tour and some of the issues that they deal with that uh, are some of their strengths and some of their challenges as well as how HR corporate has interacted with them before and uh, maybe some of the lessons we can learn from that. Hi, uh, I think part of being on a pod is, is being able to bring a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds and experiences together to combine everyone's skill sets into something that um, 
is efficient and streamlined. And so I think what I can bring to a pod is just my own background. I've worked for a variety of different uh, industries, um, restaurants, retail, um, and property management, where I've seen different uh, um, aspects and utilizations of my specific background, which is analytics. And so I think I can bring that diverse background to a pod and help um, you know, maybe be a, a, almost like a consultant as far as uh, what other people have done in the past, what works, what might not work so well, um, maybe some best practices I can help share based on my experiences. I'm Michelle Middleton and I am the HR analyst that's going to be working with the Nuclear Pod. Some of the challenges that I think that we might have to overcome in our pod are First of all, just kind of knowing our roles and getting a feel for what everybody else in our group is bringing to the table just because people may not want to speak up and say, hey, I'm really good at this. So I think that once we kind of get people to understand like what I can bring to it, we will be in a better spot. Um, also, I think that it'll be maybe a little bit of people coming out of their comfort zones to maybe have ideas about things that they aren't necessarily a subject matter expert for. So for people in compensation, for example, to feel okay to have an idea about something that might relate to staff and for staff and to have something about talent management. So I think that that will be something that we will need to kind of overcome and work on and just to get people to speak up and feel like it's an okay environment to voice their opinions. Um, I think that that's about it for the challenges that I really foresee for us. Um, when we had our pod meeting, I think that the funnest thing that we did was the plant tour. There was something about that just brought a greater understanding of once you put on the hard hat and the glasses and everything to get geared up and go through all the steps to even get into the plant, it really gave us an appreciation of an understanding of what life in the nuclear culture was about. Um, I don't know if I really went into it with any misconceptions, but after I left, I came out with a greater understanding and appreciation of what all people in our nuclear sites have to go through and just how important they are to our company. So hopefully bringing that to the nuclear role will be a great advantage to all of us. And so that are the things that I have to say about the nuclear pod. Hi, my name is Jerry Bates and I am a recruiter. I support uh, nuclear and energy supply, uh, mostly supporting Prairie Island. I have just gotten involved with the Nuclear Pod and I just want to share with you what I like best and am most excited about with that concept. I really, really am impressed with the opportunities that we have to work together in a collaborative effort. Um, we're going to have a lot of strengths and talents that we're going to be able to utilize. I think it's going to be a really great thing for us as a whole to see the dimensions and the strategies that are involved across HR and then be able to use that specifically to support the nuclear group. So that's what I am most excited about with the nuclear pod. Okay, so um, I actually had the opportunity to get go to the first day for the pod kickoff and then really was involved in the second day. And the first day was about um, going on um, the nuclear tour and, and kind of broadening my experience and my visibility into what was going on there. So I watched a little bit of the team dynamics taking place the first day before I came into the second. But I have to say my, um, my real impression came the second day when I saw the group gathering around and, and kind of looking back on what they learned on the first day, how they got to know each other and Kind of valuing, I guess, the experience that people came from, um, the experience that people brought, I guess, from their point of the business, and then understanding each other's role in that. And um, truly, what made me smile was um, their approach. Immediately, when some of the discussion happened on the second day, people used that as a way to, to start off the conversation. So, for example, um, one person brought up a point and immediately said, now I know Chris, you're probably gonna come back and say, you need to think about that another way. And clearly that was because they took in, oh, this person, this is how they solve the problem a different way and um, their approach is gonna be different than everybody else's. And so that gel that happened between the team, between the first day and the second day was amazing and I, I just kind of sat back and smiled. Okay, um, I think what made me smile was the um, enthusiasm and the level, engage, level of engagement of the team. Um, when I went to Monticello on the second day, everybody was really engaged. Um, the group was talking amongst themselves. And one of the big things that they were excited about was the level of engagement of the nuclear leadership team. John Grubb, Mark Schimmel, 
all those people um, spent a lot of time with the team explaining uh, nuclear, the nuclear culture and the nuclear organization to them and they um, sponsored a plant tour and everybody was really excited about how engaged the nuclear group was and after um, working with the nuclear group it um, is exciting for me that the rest of uh, other people in, in HR are seeing how much nuclear really wants our help and how much they need their help. So I think that's the thing that made me smile the most was the level of engagement on both sides with the, um, the business area and the, uh, and the pod. What's a pod? Um, my first impression on day two was um, how excited I was and I think how excited the people in the group were um, about getting to know each other better, getting to understand their personality types. I know Claudia walked them through the MBTI assessment, um, and I thought there was a lot of really good discussion that came out of that. Um, I think the intent of the pod, the primary intent is to work from a place of better context, and I think that what we saw on that day was a whole bunch of people who were getting to know each other at a deeper level for the first time. And I thought that that was exactly what we were aiming for, and it's just a start, but imagine when we start to throw in real, real world work challenges uh, to that same scenario. Um, I think that place of context is going to be much stronger than we even anticipated.